All right, I know that more people are still joining, but I think it would be good to just go ahead and get started. Um, so namaste and welcome to all of you. Thanks for joining our second part of our Coping with COVID series on Ayurveda for boosting immunity. Tonight's webinar, as many of you know, is an Ayurvedic cooking demonstration with Chef Divya Alter. First, for those of you who are not familiar with the Hindu American Foundation, we are a 5.3 <clears throat> nonprofit organization that works to create a better understanding of Hinduism and Hindu Americans through advocacy. Now, the Hindu American Foundation staff was actually first introduced to Divya last year at her Ayurvedic restaurant, Divya's Kitchen, here in Manhattan. We had finished up our staff retreat with an incredible lunch at Divya's Kitchen, and we are all waiting to go back for more of her incredible cuisine. Born in Bulgaria, Divya is a certified nutritional consultant and an educator in the Shaka Vansia Ayurveda tradition. She spent five years studying in India. She is the co-founder of Bhagavat Life, the only Ayurvedic culinary school in New York. And she and her husband launched North America's first Ayurvedic chef certification program, and of course, Divya's Kitchen. Divya is also the author of What to Eat for How You Feel, the new Ayurvedic kitchen. Tonight, Divya will be teaching us three simple Ayurvedic recipes that we can all easily prepare at home to help strengthen our immune systems. Now, before I turn it over to Divya, I just want to have some uh, quick housekeeping items. First, we will be recording tonight's program, both the video and the audio, and it will be released on the Hindu American Foundation's website and later on on our YouTube channel. Also, I know many of you are going to ask, tonight's recipes will also be available on our website, and everyone who has registered will get an email with that link. Secondly, everyone who has joined is muted, given the number of registrants. <laughs> Divya's demonstration will take about 40 minutes or so. After that, we'll have time for a moderated Q&A. So please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to ask questions. We cannot respond to the raise hand feature or any other chats right now. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Divya. Thank you for the warm welcome, Sheetal. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Hello from New York City. It's, it's been a very cold last few days. And I'm told that it, there are about more than 700 participants tonight. And wow. And I wish, I wish I could see you all. This is, but this is the best we can do now. I'm really happy to be with you today. Uh, special thanks to the Hindu American a sort of foundation, Sheetal and Krishna and Tejas, they're behind this whole operation. And it's been such a pleasure meeting them and working with them. So thank you so much, you guys. It's such an honor to be with you today. And the topic, we con we're continuing the topic of boosting immunity. Today with Ayurvedic cooking, this is the type of cooking that I, that I specialize in. It's a vegetarian. Ayurvedic cooking that, that's all geared around helping your body heal itself, supporting your body's immune system and adjust the system and all the functions in the body to perform the best the way they're meant to. And I hope that you're finding some time during this um, quarantine all over the world. I hope that you're finding time for yourself, for self-care, for taking more time for your spiritual practice, for your family, uh, to do the things that you always wanted to do that you never found time for. And I hope you're finding that time now. Self-care is such an important um, part of our life because the more we're able to strengthen ourselves, the more we're able to serve and help others. And myself and my husband, Prentice, will be, we've been here at home. We closed our restaurant Davis Kitchen more than a month ago here in New York. And we've been working from home, we're still very busy, trying to adjust to the situation and trying to figure out uh, the best service that we can offer. And also I've been taking a lot more time working on my second cookbook, which is really exciting for me. It will be an Ayurvedic guide to uh, cooking by ingredient. 
and it's been a lot of fun testing the recipes and writing the book. So um, that's a little bit about me and what we've been up to these days. And right now, this is my home kitchen. And I'd like to show you three very simple and very easy recipes that you can easily make at home. They don't take much time at all. And uh, they really help boost immunity. I hope most of you were able to join the previous webinar by the Hindu Fo American Foundation. On Monday, Dr. Pala Nisami gave a fantastic presentation on um, boosting immunity with Ayurveda and integrated medicine. And it was just so nice to, uh, to listen to his very scientific presentation, not just Ayurveda, but Ayurveda supported by science. And he spoke a lot about the connection between the gut health and the gut immunity and the lung immunity. So there is a very intimate connection between these two systems. And the more our digestion and gut health, the, more, the stronger it is, the stronger our lungs and our heart and many other systems in the body are. So um, the health of the gut, the, the friendly bacteria, the microbiome, he spoke about the microbiome, <clears throat> which is the lining of the gut, it all depends on the food we eat. And it, it is really, really important. The diet is the foundation of, of, of our health. And I hope you're finding more time cooking at home. <laughs> I hope you're not, you haven't gotten uh, tired from your own cooking yet. And I hope that you'll get some more ideas from um, our presentation today. Um, the three recipes I would like to show you today are a cooked apple pre-breakfast, the immune boost tea, it's a very nice tea for this season. And also I call it virus busting turmeric broth, which is a really delicious, very easy to make broth. And these three recipes, they work both as a preventative, you can have, it, have them if, if you're not sick to strengthen your system. They also work really well if, you're, if you have fallen sick with cold or flu, or the virus, or you're just not feeling very well, they will help you as a remedy as well. And they're super easy. So let's start with the cooked apple pre-breakfast. We have two cameras now, and Pages is uh, the amazing man behind the, the cameras trying to uh, operate things for us today. The cooked apple pre-breakfast is the simplest, the simplest recipe in my cookbook. And also a recipe that I personally make almost every single day. It's very easy to make it. It's, uh, you take an apple. I prefer organic apples of the sweet variety. You take an apple, peel it, chop it, and cook it with a little bit of water and a couple of cloves. So uh, what I love about this recipe is, I learned this recipe from my teacher, Vaidya Ramakant Mishra. I studied Ayurveda for many years with him, he's helped me tremendously. He recommended this, this recipe as the first thing to eat when you wake up. So as soon as you wake up, you can start cooking your apple. You can make it for the whole family if you like. And in the meantime, it's a very low maintenance recipe. It cooks for about five to 10 minutes. In the meantime, you can do other things. But uh, what this cooked apple pre-breakfast, uh, cooked apple does, is that it helps us awaken our digestive fire that has been kind of asleep while we sleep. And it, it helps ignite the digestive fire, it, it makes you hungry for your breakfast, and it also stimulates um, your bowel movement, it stimulates, like, it kind of grounds everything in your body. It feels so good when you eat this cooked apple and your whole house smells really good. So let me show you how to do that. Wash the apple first, I already did that. And first you peel it. Now Dr. Paul and Isami mentioned that the apple peels are very nutritious. And he recommended eating them. Yes, they are very nutritious if you're, um, but they're also very fibrous and they might be too hard for you to digest in the morning. So what you could do is, there's a little bruise here. 
Um, if you really want to use the, the peels, you can just put them in the pot as well. I will start cooking the water, just to save time, just a little bit of water. And a couple of cloves. We'll talk about the healing benefits of cloves. These are the whole cloves, just two are enough. To save time in the kitchen, always get your hot water going before while you're prepping the vegetables or the fruits. And this way you save more time. And here I'm going to cut the apple. You can cut it of whatever size you like. I prefer the smaller size, which is easier to cook, faster to cook, and easier to eat. Like that. And I will just put this in the pot. This is how it looks before we cook it. And then we'll cover it and bring it to a boil on high heat. Usually in the meantime, I clean my station. And let me tell you a little bit more about the healing benefits of this recipe. Now you can see the cloves. Why do we use cloves? Clove is a very powerful spice. One of my favorite spices. It, I don't know if you've noticed if you just chew on a clove, on a clove, it has. It's very pungent. It's uh, in India when I was in India, I was told that, oh, if you have a toothache, just chew on a clove, <laughs> and it's true. It relieves toothache because it has, um, um, uh, it has these properties, antiseptic properties. But you still have to see the dentist. Okay, don't, <laughs> don't just depend on the clove. The pungency of the clove helps open the uh, circulatory channels in the body without overheating. So the taste, the initial taste of a clove is pungent, but the post-digestive taste is sweet. So it will open all the pungent spices, they open the channels in the body, which is great because it supports circulation, it keeps everything moving. But a lot of those pungent spices tend to be too heating. So if you're of the fiery or pitta type in Ayurveda, if you're predominantly pitta dosha, you have to avoid some of the more pungent spices. But clove will not overheat you, even if you're a high pitta person. Some people ask me, oh, can you add cinnamon? Yeah, you could add maybe a little bit of cinnamon stick, but this recipe is not meant to show you culinary expertise. Just keep it simple. Yeah, because it has very specific effect on helping start the digestive system and just help with circulation and help things moving. And you've probably uh, heard the saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. It's true because the apples are extremely nutritious um, and they really support the immune system and many other functions of the body. So that's a great way to start your day with a cooked apple. For variety, you can also Sometimes you can use a pear as well. They, they both work. Now my, the water for the apple is boiling. So I'm just going to lower it and simmer it for about five minutes. So different types of apples take different time to cook, but the average time is five minutes. And then in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to start boiling the water for our tea. I have four cups of water. I prefer using spring water or filtered water. It's always better. I'm gonna cover it and just put it on, start boiling it. Again, keeping hot water um, while you're cooking can really save you cooking time. All right. 
we'll move, uh, we'll start cooking, uh, preparing our new boost tea. We created this recipe recently uh, when the quarantine started. And um, it's been very helpful for my husband, Francis, and I to bring this tea regularly. It's a delicious tea. It, it's, it's more than ginger. It has ginger, cardamom, fennel, and ajwain, just four ingredients. And then at the end, we uh, sweeten it with a little bit of honey and lime juice. And we en en enhance the taste with lime juice. So very easy to make. While the water is getting to a boil, we'll grate the ginger. We need about three tablespoons of ginger for four cups of water. And I'm just using a small grater. You don't have to peel it for tea. Just make sure that it's really well washed. Ginger is one of my favorite spices. I use it so much, I use it every day. Ginger. I want you to guess which is the, what's the predominant taste of ginger. Is it sweet, sour, salty? Is it pungent, bitter, or is it Just think about eating fresh piece of ginger. And I'm sure you guessed it right. It's, it's, it's pungent, spicy which makes it very heating also. But just like clove, the post-digestive taste of ginger is sweet. So even though it's pungent, it wouldn't be too heating for high pitta individuals. I think, I think I grated a little bit too much, but that's okay. So I'll show you what goes in the pot. We have about two, three, three tablespoons of ginger. If you're very congested and if you need a little more ginger, it's okay to put four tablespoons. I have four green cardamoms. I'm gonna crush them a little bit. Crushing the cardamom pod releases the flavor while cooking it. We'll talk about, about the benefits of the spices while the tea is cooking. Then I have one teaspoon fennel seeds and quarter teaspoon of ajwain seeds. And these are the initial ingredients for our tea. I'm just going to put them in the water. And as soon as it starts boiling, we'll lower the heat, cover the pot, and simmer for 10 minutes. It's almost boiling. I think our apple is ready. Here's the apple. It's so simple, really. It's very hot, so you have to let it cool down a little bit before you eat it. It's, it's best to eat the apple in the morning, not really in the evening. You don't want to stimulate anything in the evening. In the evening, you need to calm down. And if you're feeling very congested, then you could also add a little bit of like a small pinch of ajwain seed together with the cloves. That will help. We'll talk about ajwain in a minute. And, and then the, the water, the apple, it's like apple tea. You could actually use this water to make a ginger tea. You can add it to that. Or you can just drink it or add it to your oatmeal. It's, it's good stuff. Don't throw it out. 
This is our cooked apple. It smells amazing. I wish technology would allow to engage our sense of smell. Not yet. The tea needs just a few more minutes to get to boil. We're going to cook it partially open because the ginger can rise up when it's cooking too much. All right, now I want to tell you more about the ingredients of this amazing tea. Here is the ginger. I highly recommend that you always keep a piece of ginger in your kitchen, fresh ginger. Ginger, with, with its pungency, it's really a very powerful divine herb. With its pungency, ginger is fantastic for igniting and strengthening our digestive fire. So if you're feeling kind of sluggish, before, if you don't have appetite, and if you're, or you ate and you feel really heavy in your stomach, ginger is your best friend. If you're feeling very congested, ginger actually helps drive out the mucus. So the ginger tea will have fantastic, will really help with that as well. Ginger helps with circulation, again, because it's a pungent spice, it opens everything in the body, it helps with circulation, it helps move things around. It's also very powerful antiviral and antibacterial. And um, I find it very helpful also for uh, constipation. So ginger tea or ginger, like in my cookbook, I have this recipe for ginger mint limeade to serve it also in this kitchen. This is a fantastic drink to also prevent constipation as well. I love, uh, ginger also reduces gas and flatulence, so bloating. So if you're having any of those issues, put ginger in whatever you're cooking, especially with lentils and proteins, like anything that's harder to digest. I love ginger. Ginger also helps with nausea if you're traveling and you get nauseous. It helps with morning sickness. It helps with so many things. In Ayurveda, it's called the universal medicine. So always keep some ginger in your fridge. And store it well. If you see any mold on the ginger, then discard the whole piece because mold is not good for you. Ginger is fantastic. Then we use green cardamom pots. There is also the green card. This is the green cardamom. There is also black cardamom. I hope some of you like to use black cardamom, which it has a lot more smoky flavor. The green cardamom is it has more. It's more sweet and also a little bit pungent. And cardamom is fantastic for digestion. Now you notice that all spices are good for digestion, okay? There is no, <laughs> there is no uh, secret in that, but they help with different types of digestion. Cardamom is a tridoshic spice, which means that it balances the three doshas, vata, pitta, kapha, it balances all the energies in your body. So cardamom is very good to use. It also cardamom supports protein metabolism. So anything that's higher in protein, you can add cardamom to it. Um, that's why all the dairy uh, dishes, anything with milk, with fresh paneer cheese, with yogurt, you can always add cardamom. I like adding it also to almond milk. It really uh, flavors, it adds beautiful flavor, but it also helps to test the almond milk. Um, it's also good, grows really well with all kinds of sweets. So both ginger and cardamom are two in, in, integral ingredients in the classic Indian chai. And uh, the cardamom in the chai helps digest the milk proteins. And of course it has wonderful flavor. But more than that, cardamom also helps suppress, uh, it, it releases cough and it helps uh, with congestion. There are so many other things that cardamom is good for. So if you don't have cardamom, try it at home. Get, get some and try it in different dishes. It's really, really good. Um, and then ajwine. Ajwine is one spice that's not very, like, especially for Westerners, they're not familiar with ajwine. I wish, I wish you could see this really clearly. They're very small seeds. They almost look like celery seeds. 
or like anise. It, it's very, very tiny seeds. They're very tiny, but very powerful. Ajwine is a very heating spice, very pungent and heating spice. And because of that, it helps burn uh, toxic semi-digested food. In Ayurveda, it's called ama, that toxic residue from the food that remains in the body, in clogs the body when we don't fully digest food. Um, Ajwan is also very good for, um, it, there was a scientific study that shows that Ajwan can disarm eight different strains of infectious bacteria, including salmonella, which is really, really amazing. Um, Ajwan also uh, helps digestion. It's really good for balancing vata and kapha doshas, the airy and the earthy types. It's not so good for pitta. So if you're very, usually when we're sick and congested and have the flu or, or, or cold, our kapha, our earthy energy goes very high. And then even if your pitta dosha predominant, you need kapha balance and spices and foods. But if it's still, if you take ajwine and you just feel like waves of heat going through your body is too much for you, then uh, you could replace ajwine with cloves. Or if you don't have ajwine in, in your house, I highly recommend getting ajwine and using it, especially during the COVID-19 period, because ajwine is really amazing for protecting us from viral infections. And it's also very delicious. Tastes great. Now we use two heating spices. We use ginger and we use ajwine. In Ayurveda, we always balance heating spices. Sorry, let me just lower the heat here. And I'm just going to time it for, I think we'll be for uh, six minutes. Um, in Ayurveda, we always balance heating with cooling. Now, what is heating and cooling? Heating and cooling is the metabolic effect that an ingredient has on the liver. So when you eat an ingredient, it's not a temperature measure. It's is the after you ingest the ingredient, is it heating your body or is it cooling it down? So the metabolic effect is very important to consider while you cook because uh, it really helps you determine how you're going to feel after you eat food. Modern nutrition doesn't go that far. Modern nutrition just goes with nutrition facts, um, maybe taste, and some healing benefits, but. Um, modern nutrition doesn't talk about post-digestive effect, metabolic effect of ingredients, and the Ayurvedic texts have recorded in great detail uh, the, all these actions of an ingredient, of many, many ingredients, um, the actions that they have on different types of body, different body types, and in general, what, what it does for us. So uh, remember, ginger and ajwain are very heating. So to balance the heat, we're using two cooling spices. One was um, cardamom, and the other one is fennel. I love fennel. I, I literally use it. But one of the spices I use the most. Fennel seeds. Fennel is very, very interesting. When used in small quantity, fennel increases digestive fire. So if you're feeling if you feel that uh, it's not working, my stomach is not working properly, I need, I need more heat, more fire to digest my food, fennel will, fennel will help with that. If you lose it, use it in large quantities, fennel becomes more heaty. But fennel kind of regulates the digestive fire. So if you're very high pitta, you cannot use a lot of spices because most of the spices are pungent and they will overheat you. The, the, the law of balance in Ayurveda is that like increases like. So if you're very heated, if you're a pitta or it's summertime and you feel really hot, eating very hot spicy foods will increase the heat in your body. So you always, we always balance with the opposite. We need cooling foods to balance the heat. Or if you feel very cold and your hands and feet are always cold and you're like, um, um, you feel that the, your, your stomach is not digesting food properly, then you need more heat in the body. 
uh, so you need more warming foods. So we balance, so fennel here, we're using it not only because it has um, anti um, viral properties, it has, let me just see here, I have a note, I don't wanna cheat you. I wanna say what it is. Yes, here. Um, anti, it's anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant, but it also helps the respiratory system. It's also very good if you feel bloated or gassy. Uh, you can even chew on fennel seeds. It's a traditional um, Indian custom to, in some restaurants, the fennel seeds are coated with sugar and artificial colors, so don't eat those. But you can just toast fennel seeds, or even raw fennel seeds, and chew on them after each meal, and it will really help you digest the food. And it's also a great mouth freshening. So this is about our tea. And now we can prepare our last recipe. Let me just clean up. It smells so nice. It's like aromatherapy, you know, when when you cook, smell the spices because it actually it, it improves your mood, it lifts you up. All right, now uh, the last recipe is the turmeric broth and I call it uh, virus busting turmeric broth. Now a little, I'm smiling because my husband Francis is in front of me and he created this recipe. He was feeling a little bit under the weather a few weeks ago he didn't have the coronavirus, but it was just like a little bit, he was feeling something was coming down. He was coming down with something. So, and he didn't have any appetite and he just um, went in the kitchen and created this recipe. And then he came to me and he was like, oh my God, this is so good. And I'm like, what did you make? So he taught me how to make this turmeric broth recipe. Let me show you the ingredients. We have turmeric, of course some more ginger, mustard seeds, ajwine seeds, and fennel seeds again. And then we're using parsley, like fresh parsley leaves. And we're also using uh, beet greens. Now, one thing I, I was very intrigued by Dr. Paul and Summer's presentation on Monday was he explained how beet greens are very rich in TMG, which translates as trimethylglycine. Our tea is ready. I'm just going to fill it here and let it cool down a little bit. Uh, trimethylglycine, which is really powerful antioxidant and it helps the immune system tremendously. So never throw away your beet greens. They're really, really good for you. I never throw them away. I always cook them. You can cook them as leafy greens. And today we'll just add a little bit of them to the broth. Let me just show you the tea. This is the tea, a little bit of steam. Now, if you want to keep it for the day, if you want to keep it hot, I would recommend straining it in the thermos. Um, I have a, oops, the strainer. Oh, here. Mm. You can even do like inhalation, like the sinus infusion with this mix. to strain to keep it hot, but because we want to add a little bit of we want to add a little bit of honey and lime to, to it. We have the, the the tea that we're going to drink now we'll just pour in the cup. And let it cool down a little bit.
Ayurveda recommends to never add honey and also anything acidic like wine and lemon juice to very hot food or liquid because the honey becomes toxic from high heat. Honey is a very powerful immune booster and I always recommend using raw, raw honey. This is a raw honey from a local farm yeah, in New York, Roxbury Mountain. We love their honey and the maple syrup. Um, always use raw honey if, if it's available. And honey, it's, it not only sweetens the tea and makes it tasty, but also it, honey is very good for reducing cough, for clearing congestion. And it has very powerful immune uh, properties. Mm, honey is one of the sweeteners that doesn't aggravate kapha. Kapha dosha is the earthy and watery energies in the body. They're very heavy. So somebody who is kapha predominant, they love to eat sweets. But sweet, sweets make them gain weight very quickly. But honey is one ingredient that helps reduce kapha. It gives you satisfied sweet, um, sweet tooth, but it actually helps reduce weight. <clears throat> so uh, honey is also very seasonal now in the spring. <coughs> I'm just drinking some water. All right. Excuse me. Um, so when you see like the steam is kind of going down a little bit, I will add lime juice. Lemon is also okay for this particular recipe. Lime is less acidic and less sharp. Where is the juice in this lime? <laughs> <laughs> the lime will also cool it down a little bit more. The lime and the honey are really to taste. It's add as much as you like. And especially for immune boosting, the, the, the um, vitamin C in the lime is really, really helpful. We'll add the honey. And enjoy. Cheers. I'm not going to drink it now because it's a little, I don't want to, it's a little hot. But sip slowly, sip, it, sip the tea slowly. Don't drink it too fast. You can drink it in between meals. You can even drink it after a meal because it's very digestive. It's so actually help you um, fully digest your food. All right, let's go back to our here to our uh, turmeric broth. This is the the last recipe that I want to show you today. It's so easy, it literally takes less than five minutes to prepare. The first ingredient in the recipe is ghee. And not all ghee is the same. I use only cultured ghee. Cultured ghee means uh, it comes from butter that's made from churning cream yogurt into butter. And I actually do the um, traditional cultured ghee myself. Once a week, I take uh, organic heavy cream, I culture it like the way you make yogurt, and then I chill it, and then I churn that cream yogurt into fresh cultured butter. And then I cook that butter into ghee uh, with the Ayurveda healing mantras in the background. And it's really, it's a three day process, but it's very rewarding. And cultured ghee is extremely medicinal for, uh, it's one of the best a fat to cook with because it's a high heat oil. The ghee is is like the pure butter oil. It's it's the fat, the pure fat of the butter without the lactose, so you don't have to refrigerate it. And it's extremely delicious. And also, ghee is very is the number one food on the planet that's highest in butyric acid and butyrate, and that's. That's a short chain fatty acid that really helps 
um, it, it, nur it helps heal the lining of the gut. So when we talk about gut health and it, its connection to immunity, ghee is one of your best friends to healing the lining of the gut. Uh, it's also extremely delicious. And when you cook with ghee, you don't have to use a lot, but when you cook with ghee, it helps you satiate yourself with less amount of food. Yeah, like you feel full with, with less amount of food. All right, so I have a dry saucepan here. It's very small. Will, the recipe makes only one serving, so we're not using a lot of, um, the ingredients are in small quantity. I have a dry saucepan. I'm going to heat it on medium low heat, and then we'll add the ghee. Another ingredient we will use for this uh, turmeric broth is mustard seeds, very common in Indian cooking. Uh, mustard seeds have been used for thousands of years, recorded in many, even religious scriptures all over the world. And one thing about mustard, I know a lot of people in, um, in India especially, they cook in mustard oil. They use a lot, they put mustard seeds and everything. But keep in mind that mustard seeds are very, very pungent and very heated. So um, I rarely use them. I use them mostly in spring occasionally because both my husband and I, we tend to be, uh, to have more pitta, to be more fiery individuals. And mustard seeds can be very uh, too heating for you in the summer. So don't use them so much in the summer, more in the cold season. One thing about mustard seeds is that they help clear sinus infection. So again, if you're feeling congested, using a little bit of mustard seeds in your food can help with that. And there are three types of mustard seeds, um, um, yellow, brown, and black. And the bl black variety is the most potent. And here my, my pan is hot, but not too hot. And I'm going to add a little bit of ghee, like a teaspoon and a half of ghee. When I cook with ghee, I don't think, I don't think, oh, I'm going to add some butyric acid. I don't think about that. I'm thinking, don't burn the ghee. So we'll heat the ghee a little bit more. And then we'll add a quarter teaspoon of mustard seeds. And if you don't have mustard seeds or if you're too heated, if you're too high pitta, the then you can uh, replace the mustard seeds with cumin seeds. That's fine too. I already chopped the ginger. This is like a minced Five minutes ginger, just to save time. Heavy chop. Now your ghee has to be hot when you add spices, and if you're not sure it, that it's hot enough, it should be hot but not smoking. So if if you're not sure if it's hot enough, you can just add like a couple of seeds of a spice that you're using, and like my ghee is not hot enough yet because the, the seeds are not sputtering yet. So just a thing. Always, always um, heat your ghee and toast your spices on medium low heat. Don't do it on very high heat because you can easily burn the oil. And when you burn the oil, then you burn all the good properties of it. And a burnt oil, especially when it starts smoking, um, that's when the good fat becomes bad fat. And that's what can cause bad cholesterol, that can cause clogging and acidity. So don't burn the oil, better go safe and do it slowly on low heat. In general, cooking on lower heat preserves nutrients better and also uh, preserves the flavors as well. I want to tell you a lot about turmeric, but I want to start trying the spices first and I'll tell you about turmeric. One, th one thing about turmeric is that 
I always prefer to use organic turmeric uh, because the non-organic that comes from India, unfortunately, a lot of brands are mixed with all kinds of things like salt powder and rice flour and clay powder and all kinds of um, things that you don't want to put in your body. So I love Pure Indian Foods. It's an online store. I love their spices and their turmeric is very strong. All right. So you can see how the mustard seeds are frying now and they're turning they're turning gray and this they'll start to jump in just a minute. I'm going to add quarter teaspoon of fennel, whole fennel seeds, a small pinch, like an eighth of a teaspoon of ajwain seeds. We'll add the ginger. Now, if you like chili, I'm sure many of you like chili. You could also add a green, the small green Thai chili. This is really big for one person, maybe for you it's not. But um, you could add like a piece of this if you need more pungency. The chili is really optional. We're going to toast the ginger really well. It gives a really nice crunch also. Now we'll add turmeric. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of turmeric. If you are new to turmeric, if you don't use it a lot, then start with less. Start with a pinch or two, quarter teaspoon, and then you can gradually increase. Turmeric is one of the most powerful spices. We, in Ayurveda, it's called the king of all spices. Oh, it smells so good. Um, I'm sure you've, you've heard about turmeric. There's so much talk about turmeric, thousands of scientific studies and articles um, really proving what the sages of Ayurveda wrote about turmeric thousands of year, years ago. Uh, you've probably heard that, I'm adding the parsley now. You've probably heard that turmeric is a powerful anti-inflammatory. It's, it's, it's a predominantly bitter and pungent taste. I'll put it on low heat back on the, on the stove of the heat a little bit. And in the meantime, I will chop our beet greens. They're so nice and crisp. This should be enough. We need just a little bit. And I'm just slicing them thin because they will cook quickly. I can cut them across also so they're easier to eat. And I'll add that. Well, this is more than two tablespoons. I'm going to follow my recipe, but you could use more if you want to. And now we'll add salt. I like to use soma salt. Soma salt is also in Ayurveda, it's called Sainda, Sandava. Um, it's uh, the white Himalayan rock salt. It comes, it's, it's Himalayan rock salt, but the rocks are white. It means uh, there's less iron in it. It's still very rich in minerals, but there's less iron. So it's much less heating. So soma means moon, and soma salt or sandava is the most cooling of all salts and recommended to use. And here I have hot water, a little bit more than a cup, like ten ounces is about a cup and a quarter. And I'll bring this back to a boil. And we'll just simmer it for a few minutes. 
So um, I get this from a Vitamicious online store called Chandika.com. They have amazing products, Ayurvedic products, amazing spice blends that I love so much. Um, great salt to use, doesn't affect your blood, blood pressure. And let's see. Go, I want to go back to turmeric. So turmeric is a very powerful spice, really. It, it's good for so many things, especially for the liver. The Ayurvedic text, Charaka Sanhita, describes how uh, turmeric helps cleanse the liver, it cleanses the blood. And when your liver and your blood are clean, the skin is very nice. It helps with skin luster. And I don't know if uh, had, some of you had the traditional Indian wedding when before you get married, the bride, you were covered with turmeric paste for purification. Um, that's very interesting. In my, <laughs> in my cookbook, we have, I have a really nice simple recipe with kitchen ingredients of how to make turmeric mask. It really helps the skin of your face. Um, but turmeric also is a very powerful spice and because of that, you have to use it properly. The traditional way of using turmeric, um, and especially Ayurveda stresses this a lot, is to always use heat and fat when you cook, when you use it. Don't just put it in your tea. It might be too heating for your liver. Um, also, raw turmeric could be too much for your liver. So, yeah, just remember cooking it. And there was a, there was a study, I read an article by BBC saying that um, they did a study with different scientists from different universities uh, using different types of turmeric. One was fake turmeric and seeing how people react to it using it for several months and the best absorption and the best benefit that people got were the people that were cooking with it so using heat and fat to cook with it all right so our turmeric broth is also almost ready i will just it will take a minute and I, I see the clock, oh my God, time is kind of going fast, as well, so may, uh, fast, so maybe we can take some questions now. Yes. Sure, yes, we have, we have a number of questions for you. Um, so a number of the questions actually came from the apple pre-breakfast. Um, mm -hmm. A number of people have asked that the first thing that they do in the morning is drink some sort of form of water, water with lemon, or just plain hot water, should they continue doing that before eating the apples, or should the apples be the first thing? So, it depends. And keep in mind that this is the answer to many questions in Ayurveda. There is no black and white in Ayurveda, so it always depends. Is, it, is the lemon water or drinking a lot of water in the morning, is it good for you or not? It depends. If you have very low digestive fire, then drinking um, a lot of water in the morning, maybe a little bit of water will help, but drinking a lot of water, it's like pouring water on fire. It can actually weaken your digestive fire. And Vitamisher very often spoke about this. He said, don't, don't just, lemon water is not for everybody. <laughs> So, um, because also lemon is very acidic. So for a lot of people of, who have high acidity in their body, a lot of people have that. It could be too much for them. So lime is sweeter and more alkaline. So maybe try with lime water if you tend to be more heated and more acidic. Um, if you're very fiery by nature, you don't need lemon water. You have enough, enough heat in your body to to jump your metabolism in the morning, so um, it will overheat you if you have if you have that. And what I love about the, the apple is like it's tridoshic. It balance, it's good. It's almost good for everybody. Only if you have blood sugar issues, it, it might not be good for you. But um, yeah, just try it. Just try it and see how it works for you. And someone just wanted to confirm that you should also eat the clove with the apple. You could eat the clove. You don't have to. Um, you can eat it. Okay, great. Um, the next question was around the tea. A few people asked about frozen ginger. Um, does frozen, frozen ginger retain the same nutritional value? Um, if not, what is the best way to store ginger? 
Well, I never froze my ginger. Uh, see, in Ayurveda, we don't just speak about nutritional value, we also speak about vibrational value. So, um, not just preserving the nutrients, but also preserving the vibration, the prana. It's called prana, it's the life force in the food. So, freezing really diminishes the prana, or canning also. Canning, freezing diminishes the prana in the food. That, that's why we don't recommend it. Uh, so, just buy enough. Buy as much as you need for the week and use it up and buy it again. Why do you have to freeze it? Um, just use it fresh because then, see, when, when food is, has the highest vibrational value, then it has the highest medicinal values as well. We don't just heal by nutrients. We also heal by prana, by vibration. A few people wanted to know if they can drink this tea every day. Yeah, why not? But again, it depends. <laughs> If, you, if you're, especially if you're more like, if you need to balance your vata, your kapha, your airy, your earthy, and especially in spring, this tea is great for spring, but maybe not so much in the summer, because remember, it has these heating spices, and maybe you don't need it so much in the summer. But every time you feel um, discomfort in your stomach, or you feel really sluggish and achy or congested, this tea can really help you. Okay. Now, moving on to this third recipe, um, well, actually, a number of people want to know the two stores you mentioned for buying spices. You mentioned two, and I don't think everybody quite got them. Yes, yeah, so one of them is pureindianfoods.com. I'm, I'm friends with the owner, and it's a fantastic, very high integrity, uh, organic store for Indian foods, and you can find some really rare ingredients there that are very high quality. Like their asafoetida or hing is the purest and the strongest that I've ever seen. Um, not even in India, I've never seen that before. So he's very careful about selecting the best ingredients. And it's an online store, they ship very quickly. The other store is chandika.com, C-H-A-N-D-I-K-A.com, chandika. Um, it's an entirely Ayurvedic store with hundreds and hundreds of products. Really high quality, um, delicious. A lot of food ingredients also um, that you can actually use in your daily cooking, and also a lot of herbs and skincare products. It's a great start. Okay. Did you want to check in on your recipe, or should I ask you more questions? Yeah. So let me. So here is the broth, uh, and it just needs a little bit of lime juice. This is not the. Let me see if I can squeeze this. Sometimes limes, they just, they're not juicy. And this is one of those limes. So we're going to add a little bit of lime juice. Again, any citrus helps the immune system. <clears throat> Don't add it to food when it's too hot because then you lose the vitamin C and um, it turns more into acid. And this is the broth and maybe I wanted to invite my husband Prentice to come and this is his recipe. He he's the mastermind behind this, this recipe, so I want him to taste it. This recipe was inspired by a teacher. By <clears throat> Do you want to see? It looks delicious. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure it, I, I give I... Oh wow, it's great. Yeah? <laughs> so Dr. Palani Sami recommended chicken broth, but if, if you're vegetarian, this will be great, maybe even better than chicken broth. It's really tasty. Don't, don't eat it so much at night because uh, the pungent spices will stimulate you more and you may not be able to fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> Well, we're at nine o'clock, so I'm just going to give you one, one more question because I saw it coming up a number of times uh, before we wrap up. So there were a number of questions about people asking about their dosha and where, how they can figure out what dosha they are. Yeah, um, well, the best way is really, if you want to be accurate, it's not just knowing you know, what, what your body type is, but also what the imbalance is. So the best way would be to see an Ayurvedic practitioner who can read your pulse and assess uh, what's going on. Because, um, yeah, it's important to know the imbalance, not just your body type, not just your constitution, but also what the imbalance is. 
There are also a lot of quizzes online. You can you can take them for fun if you like. But um, yeah, especially if you're struggling with some chronic issues, it's best to see an Ayurvedic doctor, Ayurvedic practitioner, and they will help you. In my cookbook, I describe the what to eat for how you feel. I describe the different doshas, and also I describe the, the different types of digestion. And if you like to try these recipes, if you like more recipes, want to learn more about Ayurvedic cooking, I think this will be a very nice guide for you. The six, this is the sixth edition, it just came out, I'm so happy about it. And um, also we're publishing a lot of recipes online on our Instagram, divaskitchennyc.com. We're publishing, every week we're publishing a video recipe. So please uh, check, check us out, they're very nice seasonal recipes, very easy to make. And to clarify, we are reopening. Oh, and yeah, if you're in New York City, we would love to see you. Please come visit us. We're in uh, First Avenue and First Street, Davis Kitchen. And we're planning to reopen for delivery and to go sometime soon. We're working on it. But yes. Um. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Divya. We really appreciate it. This was fantastic. We Thank are. You. This Thank was you. fun. Thank I really enjoyed it. Well, I hope it's helpful for you guys. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to trying out these recipes. Um, to everyone who's joined us, thank you so much. We hope that you have learned something this evening and we'll be using Divya's wonderful techniques to boost your immunity. Um, please um, look out for an email. For anyone who has registered, you'll receive an email from the Hindu American Foundation tomorrow. It will include a link to the video um, so that you can watch the via cook again and you can share it with your friends and family and it will also have a link to the three recipes that she has made so fear not it will be there in your inbox tomorrow morning and with that namaste and thank you namaste thank you